Hey everyone, welcome back to Endless Money Pits. This is a BMW, and today I'll use it to demonstrate the Foxwell NT710 scan tool. Foxwell sent me this tool in exchange for conducting a review on it, but there's nothing keeping me from giving you my honest opinion. This is a dealer level touchscreen tool that can go much deeper into the car's computer than a regular OBD2 scan tool, as you'll see in this video. You can damage your car with this tool if you don't know what you're doing, and I barely know what I'm doing, so don't interpret anything in this video as advice. I'm just trying to see what this thing has to offer. I've made videos on workarounds for getting into this car's computer and resetting the airbag light, but the Foxwell NT710 is a tool that would have made those things a lot easier. This one came pre-programmed to use with BMWs, but you can purchase and download software for many other vehicles right from the device. The tool comes in a custom plastic card case with a user guide, USB-C charging cable, and a serial cable for connecting to the car. On the back it says it should be operated in a temperature range from 0 to 60 degrees Celsius, and should be stored between 20 and 70 degrees Celsius. Before using the scanner for the first time, it should be fully charged. These corners are really sharp. I almost cut myself. The sliding locks don't stay locked very well either. When charging is complete, hold the power button for a few seconds to turn on the scanner. The tool requires you to create an account and log in. After I filled out the form to create an account, the Wi-Fi connection screen popped up. I connected to my Wi-Fi network and waited 10 minutes for the confirmation email, but apparently my registration didn't go through after I connected to the Wi-Fi, so I had to do it again. It went through right away the second time, but later I noticed the quick start guide says to connect to the Wi-Fi first, so that must be what I did wrong. It says activate serial number. Okie dokie. Activated. After registration, the device can be updated. We could update these individually, so I'll just upgrade all, not update all. We're going to upgrade all. I had to go through the update process three times before all the updates were complete. So if we go to update again, these all say latest now. Under settings, you can change the units, language, font size, and more. And in the shopping section, you can download software for just about any vehicle you can think of with onboard diagnostics. If you're planning to leave the ignition on for a long time, like I did in this video, the battery should be on a charger to keep it energized. And finally, if your BMW has a round 20 pin connector under the hood, the scan tool will only work when connected to that port, which does require an adapter. If not, it can connect directly to the OBD2 port under the dash. Make sure the car's ignition is off before connecting or disconnecting the Foxwell scan tool. Once it's connected, turn the ignition two clicks to the on position and turn off any accessories that aren't being used. From this menu, there are two options I'll be using, OBD2 and BMW, but it looks like this scanner is also set up to work with Mini and Rolls-Royce vehicles. Leave a comment if you know what Brill BMW is. The OBD2 option works like a regular scan tool to report basic failure codes that will trigger the check engine light on the dash. 
it takes about 30 seconds to scan the system, which is showing that this car doesn't have any active fault codes. The BMW option takes us deeper and is able to read and operate all the systems of the car that a BMW dealer would be able to access. SmartVIN will get the scanner to automatically recognize your car, but you can use the manual selection if that option doesn't work. It just told me to enter my VIN manually like it couldn't connect, but then it did connect, so that seems to be another small glitch. It took just over 5 minutes for the tool to communicate with my car so I could continue to the next step, but I'm not sure if that's normal or not. From this menu, we have three main options, Diagnosis, Service, and Special Functions. Starting with Diagnosis, the Quick Scan option is the way to thoroughly check the car for codes. It appears to store codes that were cleared through the OBD2 function, or at least I hope so because it found 33 faults on my car and many of them appear to be things I've dealt with in the past. A really nice function of this tool is the ability to email those codes to myself so I can check into them later. Microsoft Outlook was pretty easy to set up, and I appreciate how many modern features are built into this tool. For some reason, the default subject for every email sent is feedback and suggestions, so I had to change that every time, but otherwise it worked pretty well. It took about 10 minutes to go through each category and email all the codes to myself. I've had this car for 15 years and I have no idea when the last time these codes were reset, so I'm gonna reset them and then I'll drive the car for a while and I'll see which codes come back. Under modules, there are more options, but I don't understand them, so I'm going to leave them alone for now. I'll make another video explaining how all this works once I learn more about it. Under the service menu, we find more useful tools like the option to reset adaptations. On cars with a manual transmission, this will reset the fuel trim, which adjusts itself over time based on your driving habits, and it's okay to reset it at any time. On cars with an automatic transmission, this will also reset the transmission adjustments, which I've read should only be done after the transmission has had parts replaced. The service interval can also be reset from this menu. The last menu is called Special Functions. It gives us access to resetting the oil indicator, activating the ABS pump for dealer level brake bleed, and some other functions I don't want to mess with. When you're done, hold the power button for a few seconds to shut off the scan tool, turn off the ignition, disconnect it from the car, and disconnect the charger from the car if you were using one. Okay, I'm editing the video right now and I realize I forgot to put it in the conclusion. Basically, this seems like a pretty good tool. The touchscreen is really snappy, and I like the features built into it. The Android firmware seems to work really well, and I do wish I had one of these tools a long time ago. It would have made life easier. Overall, I'd rate it a 4 out of 5, because although it does still have some glitches that could be easily worked out, it's a really good tool, especially for the price. Put the scanner back in its case, and don't forget to store it within the specified temperature range. I'll be making more videos with this scan tool as I learn more about it, and I already have a lot of other BMW videos, so check those out too. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more of the best DIY videos on the internet. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it.